everybody. Good to see ya. Welcome to another Feedback Friday, uh, number six. That's pretty cool. Um, I got my chat window here. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, I'm doing ultra low latency, so hopefully I don't have internet problems. Um, yeah, sorry I'm a little late. Uh, I was trying... I just hate the Windows firewall stuff where you want to open a program and it's just like, no, you don't want to. That That's a bad program. I'm like, no, I want to play this game, this demo that was sent to me. They're like, no, it's not. It's going to break your computer. You can't. So I had to like do all this. had to like go into Windows Defender to make the program work. Um, sound good. All right. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Um, man. Yeah. What's new? Uh, it's March in Utah and it's been snowing, which is crazy. Um, what else? Uh, the video testimonial thing. If you guys would help me out on that, that would mean the world to me. And you could win $500. And for people who aren't members of Game Dev Unlocked in the premium school, um, now this is for students only. It's basically like little review to help, you know, help people know what people actually think about the course. And we'd love to have you. Um, the contest is only for GDU students. Um, but yeah, maybe let me let me show you guys a quick video real quick. Um, if you're not part of GDU, um, I basically spent two and a half years putting everything I learned from the first tree into an online course, like in a school. And I talk about all the marketing tactics I did. I talk about like my journey with consoles. And I just, I put everything I know into it. And it started because I got so many questions from so many people all over the world. And so, yeah, I spent years making like the most high quality videos I could. And you get a bunch of cool perks. You get an awesome community. You get Adobe discount, Creative Cloud uh, discount. And yeah, I just, I, I, I would say the students here would say it's a good place. And I'm trying to, to spread the word a little bit more, get more people interested. And that's why I do these Public Feedback Friday streams. Um, because even though, you know, it, it's for the students' benefit, but I also want to show people, hey, this is a great place. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, you, we have the Let's Dev Intermediate, which is that's how you make a game in seven days without code and without really a knowledge of art. And you only use free assets and free tools, show you how to voice act and like how to like tell a story that's why that's my passion is telling stories through games and we have you know even though there's a variety of games in the school uh we we do like we focus like for me i, I love the storytelling games and then i just finished actually it's been a long time coming but i just finished the let's dev advanced section where i show you how to make a game that's pretty similar to the first tree and it's called the last waterfall this it says coming soon but it's actually all done so, yeah, people, I think people are liking it, and we got good reviews, and we got a lot of the students here, which is awesome. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this is great. Join GDU today. <laughs> That'd be great to, to have you guys. I wanted to show you that. Um, thanks for looking at it. Um, yeah, so the chat, oh yeah, I got three games we're going to play, and we're going to talk about it. One of them has an active Kickstarter, and it's like 99% like of the way to its goal, so I hope this, hopefully... This will help push it to the edge and get get past the funding goal. Uh, I got a question. Is this live right now? Yes, it's live. Um, will, there, will you be doing marketing Mondays after all? Or are there other plans? Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I haven't gotten a lot of interest in marketing Mondays. And I'm thinking, if anything, I know you, you've been asking me questions about your, your marketing plans. I think I might combine it into a Q&A and I'm still figuring it out. I'll have an announcement about that later. I'm still like just trying to figure everything out and because we're almost done with early access. We've been in early access for almost a year. It's GDU launched a year ago, which is crazy. So this is going to be a big transition. Um, I've learned a lot. I, I have about how to run this school. Um, yeah. Thanks guys for being here, dude. I love GDU. I just finished it. Wow. That's, that's a lot of content. That's, I'm glad you watched it. Thank you. Um, a Robot's Journey is here, and Wild Dose, and Effectus. Those are the three games we'll be playing. Yeah, I was late because uh, the, the, the Effectus demo would not run on my machine. But I got it working. It's definitely working now. All three of them work. And then we'll do a little live stream. We'll talk about it. Um, yeah, what else we got going? Ash says, you motivated me to start coding. Thanks very much. Oh, you're welcome. That's pretty amazing because I'm really bad at code. So <laughs> I'm glad it motivated you. 
um, Grim Raven. Hi, David. I'm so happy you're doing these streams. I hope to see more streams weekly. Oh, that's that's a lot of streams, but thank you. I, I wish I could do that many. Um, I'm currently developing my second game, and you've been a huge motivation. Thank you. No, thank you so much for being here, for caring. Um, do you use Blender 3D? Yes, I love Blender. Um, I use it in the advanced module, actually, in the school. So, yeah. Did people play test your first tree before it launched? You know, I actually... Sorry, I'm getting like distracted with questions. I, I just wanted to acknowledge you guys, let you guys know I'm, I'm listening. And then I'll, I'll start the games. I think we're going to start with Wild Dose. But anyway, um, I didn't do a lot of play testing. I had my friends, my really close friends and my family play it. But the first time I had actual real life play testing was at PAX. I did PAX West a month or two before launch. Which, in hindsight, that wasn't... I, you should... There's a direct correlation between the quality of your game and play testing, and I didn't play test that much. Um, I did make changes throughout because I released it as, you know, it wasn't early access, but I still did updates. And then when I did consoles, I did a huge update to make it more user friendly. And then I did mobile, which I'm changed stuff again. But yeah, I probably for a better launch, I should have play tested more. <laughs> But yeah, watching people play at PAX, I don't think it will help you, like, if you go to a big game convention, I don't think it will help you, like, make a ton of money, but it will tell you the most invaluable information about how your game plays. Because just watching someone play a game is the most useful information you can have when, when, um, when you know, like, learning how to improve it and adjust the gameplay and the level design. Just watching somebody without giving them hints, that's a huge help. Okay, um, yeah, let's... Let's talk about the games we're going to be playing. I talked about GDU, talked about the video testimonial. Um, that ends tonight, probably. I'll probably pick a winner tomorrow or tomorrow night. But yeah, I'd love to get your help on a little video testimonial if you guys like the school. And if you don't like the school, just give me honest thoughts. Um, okay, so we got, let's, let's go over to here. We're going to do our first game called Wild Dose, which I've played Lappysoft, um, I think the first we kind of come full circle because the first Feedback Friday was for Breaking Lockdown, I think it was called. And that was their first game. Um, maybe it was the first game, second game or something. And this is like, this is kind of based a little bit off the intermediate module, but also with its own, adding its own creative twist, which I'm excited about. It is cyberpunk, about being a cyber junkie. That sounds kind of cool and you're taking part in a revolution that's pretty that's pretty interesting i'm i'm excited to see what it's about um i like the use of assets and trying to give it its own like kind of unique flair and it's, it has a kickstarter going on right now and i did want to i did want to do a shout out to them because they have a goal of about ten thousand, and they're at ninety four hundred dollars so that's pretty cool maybe you guys could support them there's a link in the description of this video and I think it would mean the world to this developer, um, especially since it's only five days left. So yeah, maybe you guys will watch it, and you'll get uh, you like you'll you'll you know you'll be inspired to donate. It's a really it looks like a good Kickstarter. I actually don't know what, I've never done a Kickstarter, but I know like my friend Thomas Brush. He does. Um, he's like the master at this stuff, and I know Thomas has been helping uh, the developer Lappysoft or Mac Maxime Max been helping helping him as well so yeah check that out link in description and that'll be the first game and then we'll get to the other two which i'm excited to play so yeah should we should we start i, I have no idea what's gonna go what's what it's gonna happen i i have no idea um I, I i do start the game just to make sure they work but i don't play them beforehand okay and then i'm sorry if i do get stuck i know i said like Play testing without giving hints, but sometimes to keep the stream going, I do ask for hints from the chat. And it looks like we have the developers here. The developer, if all, any of the three developers want to like give insights or talk about interesting things or even talk about, you know, there's other game developers in the stream too that could use like your expertise or what's helped you with marketing, what's helped you with level or gameplay design. That would be awesome. Um, cool. All right, let's get started. I'm going to play. Is this all working? Hopefully the sound is working okay. Nice. Um, I'm using keyboard mouse. And that's cool. Oh, that's that's sweet. Live on Kickstarter right now. That's See, that's... I do think the future... Oh, sorry, you can't see it because of my stupid face. Hold on. If I turn this off... 
See the Kickstarter thing? So that's kind of cool. Um, there we go. So if I click that, like I think that opens. Oh, you get an achievement. You're awesome. And it up opens up the page. That's a really good idea. I'm a, um, yeah, one of my friends, Chris, who uh, spoke at GDC about mailing lists. He, he, he does that with his games where it's like he'll have like join the Discord channel and it's in the it's in the actual game. And this is a free demo, which is a very popular trend now on Steam is to do a prologue to help you get tons of wish lists. Is the music too loud, by the way? Um, let me know. Oh shoot, I need my chat. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I got my chat. But yeah, this is looking cool. It looks like a video. Yeah, it's a video playing in the background. I was like, I think every gamer and game developer or anybody, they always check settings before starting a game. And this is really, these are really good. It's way better than my settings, <laughs> like for the first tree. So this is looking cool. It's really polished. Um, language, got my language. So yeah, should I just go to new game? Sounds good to me. All right, let's do this. Wild Dose. Arcania says, our community manager. Um, you know what? When you when you uh, pledge to Wild Dose, you can name a cat or a wolf. That sounds pretty cool. Okay, press any key. I like the mouse cursor. Nice graphics. I lowered like last time I had like encoding so issues. I made sure like my graphics were the resolution a little lower. I could stay for hours admiring this view here with you. I'm afraid I can't afford that. <laughs> the scenery is nice, but there's nothing really exciting. These are both sad. I trust you. You will find the money and we'll be able to escape together again and again. Hmm, I like how it just drops you in. It like encourages you to like, you know, to think like what's going on. I no longer have my say. I had something new in mind for our next getaway. Oh, really? And what did you think of to spice up our life? I prefer to keep you surprised. Yeah, we'll do you that. You secretive little thing. I can't wait to see what you have planned. <laughs> Explore the island. New objective, follow the trail. That's cool. You get the you get like the full body, like the first person model with shadows. That is really cool. That that takes work. Those are the things like as a game developer I notice where I'm like, wow. I don't know if a player would notice it, but I appreciate it. This is cool. And now I have oh, new optional objective. This is cool. Collect the small idols. Follow the trail. This is great. It's really peaceful. I'm seeing like a little bit of like like the shadow flickering, which I think has to do with either the near camera clipping plane or the shadow bias in the directional light. So maybe take a look at that to get rid of that flickering on the shadows, on the terrain. But it's really pretty. And maybe like, maybe I don't have the volume high enough. But it'd be cool if like I could hear like the waves crashing. And I know like this is an, this is like a demo. This is just first session. I wonder how this ties into cyberpunk anything. I, I really don't know. Like, and it's like, I want to find out more. <clears throat> um, yeah, this is cool. Oh, there's the trail. Can I jump? I can crouch, but not jump. <sighs> I hope his or her death was as peaceful as this island. Continue. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is... I bet you used Gaia to make this. Do you think there are still places like this on Earth? Could you imagine living that way? In a little house lost in the woods? In your supply lines is on Earth. Man, what is going on? There, there, that's kind of like this little thing where I'm like, what, is, what does that mean? Little... Place like this on Earth. I like the side. I like that how there was like gave me a little pop up like collect the other optional things. 
We will never know. Nature reserve nature reserves are now off exactly. limits. But we're lucky to have fresh air. Fresh air. Let nature come to you. Okay, the developer says go in the pause menu. Fresh air islanders edition. Okay, this is cool. I imagine I can't go in these houses, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look because I'm so curious. Yeah, I I bet a lot of players will try to go in the house. And you don't have to. But people just want to explore. Okay, I'll follow the trail. This is cool. I see ships in the back. It's very picturesque. It's idyllic, you know what I mean? And I think... From what I've just seen on the Steam page, I feel like it's going to take a dark turn. Especially if it's about druggies and cyber junkies. So, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. But this is it's kind of, yeah, it's an unexpected intro, which is cool. And every, like, every game, like, I don't know, you think of Half-Life 1 or Doom 3, where you're just kind of like, oh, there's one of those things. You just kind of like, there's always like a calm before the storm. Look at these proud sailors ready to face the unknown. Who knows what they're going to encounter? Continue. I like this. Is this person with me? Oh, is it someone like I'm talking to on the phone? I found a small idol. That's kind of the question. Oh, and then I look at my shadow. That's cool. That's like, this is environmental storytelling through shadows. Because I see like I have like a cyber arm. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I have to admit, it's quite dark. <laughs> it's from the developer. Thanks for being here and answering questions in the chat. These, um, I have actually, I've been really following the path. I have not felt lost, even though there's a giant terrain here. Um, that's something I've made a mistake of, is like, just putting, letting people explore, and they get lost, and they get frustrated, but just having these little waypoints, these little fences, I haven't felt lost yet, which is great. Um, something I have thought of is, I'm just getting a little bit of conflicting art styles, and I, I like the low poly, like, water. But then this is a photorealistic with like super high res, like wavy sand. So maybe just a little bit of work to make the art a little more cohesive. That might add a little bit, might make it feel like more like designed with intent. Okay, I think I'm going the right way. That'd be ironic if I was like, yeah, I'm not lost. I think it's just walk on the beach. I think, because like this, this big wall of rocks, that's kind of like encouraging me to be like, okay, you need to just go around it. And I do like, I see like thing, oh, there's a cave. It's getting late. I think we should go oh. home. It goes so fast every time. It's so frustrating. Good, the session was starting to bother me. That's why you work hard, to give us moments like oh, this. Oh man, am I, am I having an acid trip? <laughs> Go through the cave. That was good. I never got lost during that whole time, which is great. That's that's good. That's good. And I'm starting to get feel like something is definitely wrong. This is cool. I love that. That looks awesome. What is gonna happen? Can you guys still hear the game okay, by the way? Fresh air. Oh logging out. That was cool. <laughs> Something freaky's happening. I like how it just moved in and did like a little glitch thing. That was awesome. I did not do the optional thing. Is there anything I can say to make you change your mind? I want to try just once. Sorry. Oh, I just realized that stupid stuff is blocking. Sorry, guys. I want to try just once. I no longer support these... I don't know what that word is. Erastus of freedom. At each session, my frustration grows. I want to try just once. I hope you won't regret it. Do you even know what you're getting into? Isn't that true freedom? I have no idea. Talk to the dealer. This is crazy. Good evening. 
how can I help you? It depends on what you offer. I heard you go through. I've heard I, that I had to go through you if I wanted something new. It depends on what you offer. What do you want? Give me the strongest thing you have. I think I want freedom. I mean, like, that that resonates with me. I want to choose that. I'm looking for a one-way ticket to freedom. Oh, seriously, the one-way ticket is too expensive for you. But you should be okay until the next connection. Wild Dose. Injection in three, two, one. Injection. Oh, man. Wild Dose, an experience coded by the Capuchin. Disclaimer, this product is not approved by the Virtual Drugs Federation. Okay. Virtual Drugs. I did not know any damage caused to your virtual implant while using this product will void your warranty and will not be covered by any insurance. Am I a robot? Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your implant? Or am I like a humanoid? Am I android? Cyborg. What is this weird accent? Okay. Are you sure this is <laughs> it's not weird. The Capetian. The Capetian. If you have any problem understanding me, you can always rely on the subtitles from your HUD. Now, as I don't want to spoil your experience, this I is cool. explore this area. Have fun. This is like a big, long world. I like the, the dialogue choices. Um, yeah, I just, I like how it's thrown me into this weird cyber adventure world. Um, now this is looking like totally different and maybe now like if that that session that we did It actually would make sense if like the art style is a little different Yeah, I, I kind of see what the developers trying to go for now This is cool This is crazy Obviously, there is no more electricity. You may be in a virtual world. You have to supply your servers there should be some power left in the backup generator. You won't be able to miss it. It's a lever located under a panel with a big lightning bolt on it. Okay. New restore power. Okay, cool. Then I'll come back here. I like it's it's very clear. Oh. Is that Okay, I have to confess it's you're not alone. Can't wait to meet your new friends. Be patient. That moment will come soon enough. Yes, fresh air is supposed to be more real than reality. Okay, I, I don't want to die. Is there music? I'm hearing some creepy sounds. And yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm seeing in the chat, like, did the dealer give him something? And I actually, I don't know that either. I'm not sure. Whoa. Kind of crazy. This is pretty tense. It's definitely different than the beginning of the game. <laughs> Use. Okay. Cool music. This is cool. It's. It, just the camera move with the music, it's like, whoa, something intense is happening. It's cool, it's very cinematic. Very good audio recording, yeah, I like it. Uh, so, I turned, oh. Wait, I saw like a person over there. Yeah. Don't know what, are those enemies? So, I don't think I go... Okay, I don't go that way. I think that was that was the breaker I needed to do, but now hopefully... Oh, crap. Can I just walk slowly? Oh! Okay. Don't say hello. Don't well, say hello. Leave this place. Okay, we need to go back to the beginning where I needed the power to turn on. This is fun. I love, I don't know, I'm just a sucker for narrative games. Narrative first person games. Okay. 
here I am. I wonder if I could fall off. I'm not gonna try it, but I, I wonder if I could. Server online now. Don't fall. Let's wait for the elevator. Okay, I'll go this way. Oh! Okay, guess I can I jump? <laughs> Thank you for saving my life. Okay, I can jump. I guess this would be a good spot. Like, you know, like when you're learning to play a game and they're showing you the ropes, you could say like, now I have like a button prompt on here that says space bar to jump. Just because I couldn't jump at the first part, so that kind of confused me. Okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, that was, that was hard. But I'm glad it doesn't punish me too much. Oh, that's great. Thank you for the checkpoint system. That's really nice. Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, shoot. Should have known that one. Wait. Actually, I'm probably gonna try to learn the pattern. Did it. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Hopefully those enemies won't get me. And I know there's like a, there's a cyber city, a futuristic city I wanna explore later too. Okay, I'm going. Is this a button or something? Man, this is very dystopian. Okay, this is gonna be hard. Shoot! Ah! That's gonna be hard. This might be hard. <laughs> gotta, gotta get my platforming expertise going. Oh no! <laughs> if you could take a few minutes to show the city, that would be awesome. Great music. I do love the music. Um, yeah, ha tell me, Wild Dose in the chat, how to get to the city. I know you mentioned it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Doing it. Doing it. Okay, got it. I did it. Born to be wild. <laughs> okay. Is this the city coming up? So the frame of the cube is the key, but just run and jump. Nice transition after you do. I love the checkpoint system. Thank you for not making that super frustrating. That actually made it fun, because I know like if I died, I'd just be like, okay, I can try again. It's like Celeste, where it just, yeah, you die. You die a lot in Celeste, but you just, you go right, it's so fast that it doesn't bother you that much. Oh. Okay, and this is kind of based off the intermediate section of the course, I imagine. Got like the pixelated sky, the dark spooky forest. I love the, is this Aura 2 volume, or maybe it's just normal Unity fog, but I'm really liking the, the volumetric light. And, yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how they're connected yet, and maybe that's something you find out later in the full game. This is the, the prologue, or the, the first session. But, I, just, I'm just giving you a stream of consciousness. Just use this information however you want. I, I have no idea, like, how they're connected. And maybe that comes later. But now, they're feeling like three separate games, to be honest. Which, maybe that's what you're going for. Um... Cyberwolf. Wow, you just run into my brother's back. Lucky guy. It's a bit my own VIP club. My best customers. However, don't be surprised they snub you. They're a bit haughty. This is what it takes to belong to the elite. If you continue to consume my dub, and believe me, I'll make sure that this is the case, you will also be able to join the pack. So is this, so I took like the final, or like the freedom, I wanted like, I took that one dose from the drug dealer. So is that what this is? It's like, these are like separate like sessions I'm having with my, my implant? That's kind of what I'm thinking of at the moment. Okay, do you see green lights? Green lights. what this is? Well, me too. The Shelly guys you saw earlier started to build this stuff everywhere. It's pretty, but in reality, it's a pain in the ass. It sucks up my memory. The memory I had to. Is the Capetian a... With the suite of my keyboard. So is that a computer program? I'm not running a charity here. If they need a server, they just have to pay your host. Maybe it's like the voice in my head. I'm kind of thinking like Jarvis from Iron Man or something. <laughs> they need a server. They just have to pay a host. Deactivate the beacons. Beacon 1. Deactivated. 
Oh, I know this music. This is from... Is there going to be another beacon over here? I'm not totally sure. Oh! <laughs> what kind of shit? <laughs> You're no hero. You're just a fucking junkie. Forced to follow the orders of a wild guy during his virtual trip. Okay. So, will I, I like this character. <laughs> I'd like to know how you succeed in triggering my voice. Only the vital functions of the neural implant. Oh, have so Nora. It is the voice in my head. No, that's creative. And yeah, like Luke says in the chat, I'm loving how creative this game is so far. I agree. This is creative. Okay, I'm seeing, seeing these spotlights, and because I associate the green with those guys from the last session. But this is pretty cool. Um, I do like how it doesn't explain everything. And I'm saying, like, how I'm learning more. Um, but I like how it, it wants you to, like... It, it wants you to get... Oh, what is that? Oh, wait, is that, is that a beacon or is that something else? I'm glad it's not telling me every little thing. That is not a beacon. Is that a beacon? Yes. Uh, I hope... I hope that doesn't screw me over. Oh, let's go on the stairs. Beacon two deactivated. Are you gonna? Oh, that's a dude. Must have been wondering what these work figures are. We call them the offliners. I think I will guide a bit more players in the first level. I lose some players in the first minutes. So they got stuck in the session until the relatives. Um, I I felt it's been pretty engaging. I'm guessing I have to backtrack. And I, I try... How long have I been on? Oh, crap. <laughs> right as you said that, that was actually... That was good timing. Don't like that! <laughs> Oh, I, ah, dang it. They're fast. Discon achievement unlocked. Disconnection. Nice. Um, yeah, if I could ask. I probably need to wrap up this game soon. Um, I want to I want to show the cyber city though, the futuristic city. So, Max, if you could tell me, like can I select it from the menu? L let me know in the chat. The glitch appears before they touch you. I... No, no, no! Is it hurting me? Is that my life in the lower right corner, by the way? Okay, hopefully you get stuck. I'm too scared to look behind me. Okay, I think I got him. Yes, you can go back to the main menu and continue. Okay, I'll do one more beacon, and then I want to show... I want to see the, uh, the city. That's from the screenshots. Sometimes I run into, like, weird colliders, I think. Um, that might, that might be something to mess with. Just maybe there's like some floating colliders. I can't climb that, can I? No. Third beacon is quite fun. We got, uh, almost 90 people watching. Welcome, we're playing Wild Dose. Um, this is like the, for, this is for Game Dev Unlock students. To like show, show them to the world and get feedback. Oh, yeah, I, again, yeah, this is from the advanced, the intermediate module, and I do like the idea of the beacons, just so you, you know, you have a general idea where to go. Oh, crap, more of those guys. But I still feel like we're in the city. Oh, that doesn't look good. This green light is interesting. Oh! It glitched. I'm guessing that's bad. That's kind of cool. I like the sound emanating from it. It is. It's nice atmosphere. It is. And it's very... It seems cold and desolate. And the music's nice, too. Oh, 
Oh. I got the glitch. Now it's kind of rainy. I don't know what I did wrong. Was that a mistake? On my part? What is this? It says slippery. Okay. Okay, I totally lost where the beacon is. I see two. Oh. Can I climb up it? Yes. Very cool. Ladders are so hard to do in games. That must be Nora, the AI voice, right? I love it. <laughs> is one of the models that come standard with the Gamma class implants built by Rukin Shinazuki. However, slight random variations are made during the initial setup to ensure a unique experience for each user. Oh, Interesting. To me directly. That's cool. I like energy with exchange. You shouldn't project your fantasies onto a synthetic voice, you pervert. Uh -oh. I dream of the Capetian every night. If I had a body, I would <laughs> oh, wait. have to oh, crap. rob against him. Hey! How did you do that? I like these characters. I like the Capetian. It reminds me of... And I should show the Cyber City. Um, the makers of Amnesia, Insomniac Games. Wait, is that? No, Frictional Games, sorry. Frictional Games, they made... Uh, what was the name of it? Before Amnesia, the indie horror masterpiece. P Penumbra or something? Um, Max, I highly encourage you to play the Penumbra games. Um, the writing is... The Capetian reminds me of like the... Of, there's like a little demon that gets stuck in your head and he's pretty funny. And it's kind of, it's just an interesting juxtaposition because you have like this really scary, creepy game, but then you have like this kind of mean spirited voice inside your head, Penumbra. Um, yeah, definitely play, play the, there's like two Penumbra games. And again, they're just kind of like their first person adventure games. And they're totally different from yours. They are, they're totally different. But um, what's cool is, I, I don't know, I think you could. I think, like, seeing how they do the writing and everything, which you're already doing it, doing it well, but it's just for good inspiration. Okay, that guy's creeping me out. Um, yeah, like, the low poly thing. I'm just gonna go around this way, but he's still kind of following me. Um, yeah, play the Penumbra games. Um, and also I'm getting, it's like a mix of P pen penumbra? Is that how? Am I even saying that right? Yeah, there it is. Overture, Black. Yeah, there's three of them. Um, Black Plague and Requiem. Um, and I'll, what else is gonna say? I'm getting. I'm, have you guys seen the the movie Her, with Joaquin Phoenix? Uh, Spike Jones film. I'm getting those kind of vibes too, which is cool. Like I've never thought about combining those kind of things. Okay, maybe. I, I do want to... Wait, is it... Okay, it says 4 out of 5 beacons. The cake is a lie. Okay, I'll do, I'll do this part. I bet I can do it. I think... Oh my gosh! Am I, am I supposed to go this way? I don't even know. It, where's the last one? Okay. Oh no. Well, there's a bunch of stuff on my screen. Is this it? Okay, cool. Cool. Beacon deactivated. All right, what's going to happen? There you go. You will stop pissing me off. Oh, sorry, but it feels good. Well done. You did not do too bad. Huh. I still have a favor to ask you. Yeah, her is a really good it's movie. Did you notice the creepy cabin? I think they are hiding out there. Oh, I did so see the creepy cabin. Unexpectedly, I'll screw them up. And hurry, because they must be mad at you. Enter in the cabin. I don't really know where I'm at. 
I like how this character... Oh my gosh, there's a lot of them. Um, I'm guessing I go to this ladder. <laughs> um, I like how he's kind of messing with me. He's toying with me. Alright, can I make it? Can I make it? I might have screwed up. What happens if I go this way? Um... Okay, I didn't die. That's nice. Oh, these are just to guide me. Okay, they're lampposts. I get it. Um, this actually might be a good spot to stop and just check out the city real quick. But yeah, this was... I I'm curious to see what happens next. And I'm enjoying the dialogue. I'm enjoying the voice acting. This is really good. And I haven't... It's... It's so easy in a game to, like, pace things poorly. I don't know. I, I think I... The first tree... There's parts I'm not proud of where you just kind of wander too long. And I haven't felt that in this game. Like, it's fast-paced, it changes it changes it up fast, and that's good. Like, that's, that's a compliment. See, that is great. Yeah. Wild Dose in the chat says, If you want to know what's at the cabin, play the game. It's free. This is the first session of the prologue. Alright, I'm gonna go to the main menu. Thanks, Thanks for, for playing, playing this first chapter. Dose. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow the Kickstarter. Thank you. Man, you're so close. Almost to 10,000. That's exciting. That was a really good idea, doing that. Um, okay, so if I hit continue, and then I'm guessing it would be Eleftheria, I'm guessing. We're gonna find out. Wild Cyberdose. That's actually... That's, that's actually not a bad idea. Wild Cyberdose. Okay. I actually kind of like that suggestion. It gives a little bit more context. This is cool. Using the Cinti pack, I bet. Volumetric light, lots of uh, lots of lights. So nice of you to invite me. I wanted to point out that our cash flow is at its lowest. Uh, we would have to complete a few contracts in order to refinance ourselves. Did you hear the boss lady? If you want a good time, you have to earn it. So, get to work. Oh, uh, so just have to earn money. For a prologue, this is a lot of content. Whoa. This is cool. I like how alive it is. Can I talk to these NPCs? There's a lot of content for Prologue. If if you could get the game to be like four or five hours, you could probably charge 15 bucks for it. Um, or you could play it safe and do it cheaper. I, I priced my game lower than what other people recommended and I'm glad I did. The first tree started off at eight bucks for two, three hours. Um, but I know people, you know, we don't want to underprice our games and our hard work. That's just as competitive out there, you know? It would be- it would be cool if, like, the NPCs... Oh, is this our, my drug dealer? I'm not ready, though. I'm not ready to talk to him. Developer says, my target's four hours. More if I succeed in having stretch goals. That'd be awesome. Oh, this one talks. This is a restricted area. Continue. Okay. It'd be cool, I don't know, maybe if... This is totally unnecessary, but it could add to the amp, the ambiance of... If you bump... If you bump into a NPC, they say, watch it, like, kind of like GTA. The pedestrians in, like, Grand Theft Auto, like, they'll just be like, what do you want? What you looking at? This is cool. You can't pass. Oh, okay. Classic, classic, you know, blocked area motif, which works great. I'm getting like some weird, like, volumetric light artifacts when it gets bright. Like on the top of the screen. I think if you mess with the occlusion settings in Aura 2, you can fix that, I think. But no, this is really cool. It's impressive. 
It feels like a live city. That That is really cool. Okay, I think we're gonna wrap up Wild Dose. You didn't hang around. You guys should play the game to see what happens next. But, that was cool. Excited to see more. Back to the project. It's nice to see you, Jeff. The city looks fantastic. That is Wild Dose. Thanks for letting me play it, Max. Um, yeah, what'd you, what'd you guys think? This game needs to get finished. I, I, I think so. Don't forget to follow the Kickstarter. Follow the Kickstarter. You did voice acting. You've done multiple different types of games. There's an interesting story being told. There's kind of different. Pla there's like platforming. Uh, yeah, that was that was great. I think maybe the the achievement images are being are missing. Maybe that's something to get added later. But yeah, this is awesome. Good job. Oh, cool, you get a cool little banner. Last hours to back it. Congrats, Max. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that was fun. Um, Robin asked, do you have any sort of rule for how much money you ask for your game? <sighs> That's a hard one. It's gonna be, you can spend months studying, studying it, but some things to keep in mind, people do not care how much you worked on the game. Um, they just care about direct value they get. And so the direct value that people usually use is playtime, which I don't personally agree with. Like, I don't know, the game inside was two or three hours and it was 20 bucks and it was like the best 20 bucks I've ever spent. But you get, I don't know, some people they get really into the playtime amount. And so you do have to keep that in mind. And I did, I, what I did is I did a poll for the first tree. I asked, okay, this game's gonna be about two, three hours. How much would you pay for it? Some people were like, well, my, I try to keep it to a dollar per hour of enjoyment, so I'd only pay three bucks. I'm like, well, I'm not gonna do three dollars for my game. And so I found games that were similar in length and similar in genre. Like there's a game called, was it 35 millimeter? Like this, uh, like a kind of like an exploration game based in Russia. Is it 35 millimeter? And that was $8 and it had like, dude, it was very successful and it was very polished looking. And so I did $8. I probably should have done 10. I'm kind of glad I did not do 15. I think 15, in $15 territory, then you're competing with Hollow Knight and Stardew Valley, which is crazy. <laughs> that is like hundreds of hours of amazing indie game perfection. So yeah, that's that's the thing you got to keep in mind. Gamers don't care about how much you worked on it. Um, the price has to reflect the value that they think they're getting from it. Okay, cool. We got to move on. Um, that was Wild Dose. And now we're going to play a game called Effectus. And here's Effectus. And I think the 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 um the developers are friends. They're both both based in France. Is that right? Do we have Effectus here? Uh the dev developer here. Um in the chat. Oh, 35 mm. Yeah, that was the game. Sorry, let me show you guys real quick. Um, I love this game and it was chill and it was like several hours and it sold a gob of copies and it's not you know there's a, there are some people that don't like it it probably would have gotten worse reviews if it was like fifteen dollars but when this game came out it was eight bucks and it did well because of that um yeah now it's five. Oh no it's it's nine okay it's nine commercial license huh it's nine dollars and that is like that is, that puts you in the lower end, but they did well because of that, you know. Um, yeah, well, affect this. Yes, we live nearby. We live thirty kilometers from each other. We have we are the same age. That's awesome. Um, this game again, it's kind of the same genre. So I'm I'm curious to see. Uh, I'm curious to see what's different about these two games. Um, I love the capsule art, by the way. This is really good capsule art. The eye, this eye, this like implant eye, like really grabs your attention. The 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 font is awesome. I love like the blending mode you did in Photoshop, and I like how you said add to your wish list in the bottom right corner. So I'm excited to play this. Oh, there's a Kickstarter page. Wait, is there a Kickstarter? No, oh, it's coming. It's coming up. That's cool. Good idea. I love like the butterfly and everything. This is really high quality capsule art. Um, yeah. Should we play it? Yeah, let's just dive in. And then, we, yeah, our developer is here. Thanks for joining us. I'm excited to play it. 
and we'll get out of steam and then I did get it working finally Windows was being such a butt about opening this Mark says, what I find is most people who say $1 an hour playtime are used to games that waste 80% of their time. That's another thing that I've talked, I've thought a lot about at length. Um, the developer of East Shade and Leaving Lindau, a guy named Danny, he worked really hard to not have any boring moments in Leaving Linda Lindau. And he said people would complain. They're like, ah. It should have been longer and he's like it's short because I only kept the good stuff that doesn't waste your time and that was the kind of the lesson he learned is that a lot of gamers they don't mind wasting their time they like kind of taking it easy and walking from A to B and they don't mind backtracking as much I don't I don't really like backtracking but apparently that doesn't bother people as much as he would have thought or I would have thought so it's interesting Okay, let's play, let's play Effectus. Fancy logos. This is the alpha, and here's the Kickstarter. Again, I love having the links in the game. That is such a good idea. Something I'll do in the future for sure. It's cool, I like the, like the mood. The music sounds nice. This is great. I'm just taking it in. Um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna call you Effectus Developer. Effectus Dev. Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna ask you an important question. Oh, have you considered doing a prologue? That seems to be a really popular way to get tons of wish lists. Um, do you want to start a new game? Any previously saved game will be lost. Yes. No, no, dis no, I don't have a gamepad, so we're good. Let's do this. Menu's really nice. I really like that menu. Music choice is great. How did I get here? Where am I? Why can't I remember anything? I like the cinematic, the top and bottom bars. The, the letterbox look. Okay, don't panic, Jax. You remember your name, at least. This is cool, just drops you in. You're like, why did what happened to her memory? Or is it him? It's a him, right? Sorry. No, it's a woman. <laughs> I think it's a woman. Deep breaths, let's get out of this rain first, and then we can figure out the rest. I wish there was a lower floor of the city for idiots like you. <laughs> I like the shaking text. Jax, what the hell? Come on, calm down. There's gotta be some place open. Alright. I like that. A difficult awakening. Get help. And then this is something I always do in any... Any, like, side scroller, I always go the opposite direction to see if there's a secret. <laughs> Love the music. Can I do anything else? I can jump. Dub oh, cool. So I'm getting some, you know, we talked about inside earlier. I'm getting some inside vibes. I love all the volumetric light. Can look up. That's cool. I like the car passing in. The people just living their lives. Let's go in here. Loitering is for customers only. If you ain't buying, then scuttle. Do I have any money? Hello, sir. What's an up top citizen doing here? It's been a long time since I saw an EDS in Autem. What do you mean? What's an EDS? You don't know? The emotions display system. You're basically showing up everyone showing showing to everyone how you currently feel with lights on your cyberware. Blue is positive and red is negative. Oh. Afford them. That's why I guess they're, you're not from here. How does the EDS work? Every decision you make influences your emotions. The EDS just displays them. To be honest, it's just a pointless toy for spoiled show-offs like you. 
In Autem, anyone can feel positive, so what's the point? I'm sorry if I offended you. I didn't mean to. You see, you just responded nicely to my personal attack, and your EDS raised up a bit. Okay. Okay, I'm getting it. This is cool. Okay, thanks. I understand now. Synth meat ramen? It's the best. Um, okay then, I guess. Well, awesome, is that what they call the city? You just woken up from cry cryo sleep? Cryo sleep? Sounds like you got some leakage in your wirings. Autem is just the lowest level of tribus. Nothing but low paid manual labor and washed up dregs here. Offices and white collars, though, that's right above us. Nothing but legends from up there since no one but the wealthy has come from there. Have you ever been up top? Only a handful of times. It gets trickier getting past the checkpoints without the proper pass. Huh. This is cool. I love adventure games. Like this. The choosing your dialogue choices. Finally, a paying customer. I just want to scan your chip make sure you have enough nanos to pay. You know, nano dollars? <laughs> um, I don't think I have any money. You better hope you're joking or else I'll bust your chips back to your last malware update. <laughs> Let's see, it says here, your name is Jax. Bloody nanoless vagrant. I would have, should have guessed it. Get the hell out of my shop. Damn my luck. I'm all wet from this sump. I don't know what sump is. You better have money if you're coming in here. F you. I'm going to try to keep it YouTube friendly. F you. You're at the one stuck outside. You're getting drenched in this righteous piss. And you get your ass back off the street. Now, now, Ch Cho. Okay, we're getting. I like how you highlight the names, Red. Um, well, actually, I just might pay for this board drag. This is cool. I have had one thought. The dialogue tree at the top is so different from like the dialogue at the bottom. I wonder if there'd be a way. I wonder if it'd be worth your time to uh, consolidate those two designs. Yeah, see, it's like. Maybe just even just putting the picture down below or and the picture is like so photo real But I wouldn't do the low poly face either. I Don't know. I, I don't know if like I'm in love with like the the photo real photo in The dialogue, but I don't know. Maybe I, I'm not saying that's like Gospel truth or anything. Tell me Jax. You don't look like an autumn regular. What brings you to Cho Chow's chose a ramen shop? I don't know this place is yet so familiar yet so foreign Sounds like you got hacked. Okay, we're getting getting a piece of the puzzle by some muggers. Strange though, it looks like you've got full effectus dosage in you. Effectus? What is that? Right, they wiped your mind. Effectus is equilibrium. It restores us to our full selves by giving us a window to experience positive emotions. A single dose gives you a window of three days, but without it, this world would be pointless. The thing is, it's getting harder and harder to come by the drug down here in Autem. No one affords full dosage anymore, which means one thing. You're from up top. This is cool. Maybe, yeah, with the, the with the subtitles down below, maybe just having the photo near it, too. I think that's the only big thing. Um, yeah. That they don't know anything. They'd rather assume that you do know. Maybe for ease to pixelate the photos a bit. That's, that's an idea, too. Just kind of make it a little low res. That's actually a good idea. I, I kind of like that. Surely drugs aren't the answer. Why is Effectus so rare? Officially, Effectus, so Effectus is a corporation. Effectus Corp doesn't want to risk the lives of its employees. Violence is pretty prevalent down here, especially with the rise of cyber terrorism. But if anything, this strict rationing has only made the violence worse. It doesn't make sense. Look, I owe you for your help, but I have nothing to my name. I guess you're right, but as I'm feeling generous, I'll tell you what I can do. Bones is looking for a new goon to help him out. It's not glamorous, but I'll pay and give you a chance to pay for, for a roof over your head. Who's, who's Bones? He's a hacker, and a good one at that. They say he once brought an entire corporation to financial ruin. Not sure if that's true, although he certainly hates showing in public. Where can I find him? Just continue your way until you find a building with a sign saying Cyber Stop. You can enter the buildings and use the door panel. So Cyber Stop. He's always in his shop. Come on, here comes the f here comes the food. We finish eating, then we can go over to see Old Bones. Thank you, Merrick. Very cool. All right, let's go. We got like a little level little level indicator at the top. That looks nice. We can crouch. Love the volumetric light. Ooh. 
So are these, do they have the emotional, like, display thing? If that's green, is that different? Oh, there's Cyberstone. Let's go. This is it. I like the world that you've created. You're, it's, it's, it's good storytelling, like the amnesia story and trying to figure out Trying to figure out what's going, to, what's going to happen, what this character's like, the hero's journey is. Bones, come on in. This is a cool shot. There's like a GameCube in the back. <laughs> That's awesome. Xbox controller. Look what the drain brought us. And what can I do for you? I'm Jax. Merrick sent me. I really like the color coordinated names. He said you might have work for me. Merrick, ha, must have sent you to pay off his debt. Man played you for a fool. Uh, not sure. Don't remember anything but my name. Well, that's interesting, but also not unusual. Look, I need work and a place to stay. Can you help? If you're willing to work, then yes, I can help. I'm willing to do anything you've asked of me. Even kill? Well, far be it for me to stand in your way, then. I am not a criminal, if that's what you're asking. I won't hurt anyone. Oh, that was blue. Okay. Mercy, an unusually unusual quality in Autem, but a pleasant surprise nonetheless. I want to, I want to be good. I'm getting this feeling. I'm getting like these flashbacks from Knights of the Old Republic, the old, you know, the old Xbox game and PC game. You kind of start, you kind of lost, you start with your memory being lost, and you're kind of like in a rich city where there's a big class war going on. Um, I think that's what happened. It's been a long time. That was like one of my favorite games of all time when I was younger. Okay, Jax, we have a deal. What is that you do anyways? What I do is I is what I do is to help people. Sometimes they don't even know it, but I'm always looking out for their interests. That's rather vague. You can't be fooled that easily, right? You could be very useful to me. What I do is not important for you now. Now go rest and we'll talk about your first job tomorrow. You can sleep in one of the hall rooms. Cool. Gonna get a mission. Gonna earn some money. Motion thing reminds me of Neo Cab and a cyberpunk story that I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe you got hacked, Mark. Um, yeah, this is cool. It's I love like I don't know. It's just it's nice visuals. I really like that idea of like pixelating the graphics of the people, like just doing the mosaic filter in Photoshop. I, I think that would be a good idea. And then just then just adding the pixelated photo like below. Or maybe you don't need to do that. It might be dumb having their face every time. I need to think about what other games do. Celeste has the little has the little like faces of the people talking. I wonder how they do it. Like when Celeste is by herself, I wonder if it shows the photo. When she's talking to herself. But, okay, but I'm not like the teeming masses heading to work down below. I know I need to ask questions. I better go see Bone so he can give me my first assignment. I'm like invested in Jax's journey. I want to like, I feel like she's kind of worried. Maybe she's like a little scared. I don't want to see what happens to her, which that's, that's great. That's what you want. Good morning, Jax. I hope you've rested. This is Dr. Case. She is a specialist in mental development and growth by biological technology. We were just talking about your case and how you lost your memory. Do you know what happened to me? We think what happened is that someone managed to give you drugs that had the effect of suppressing your memories. Of course, there, that is something that little has been heard to create such a psychotropic drug that would, you would require an incredible amount of money and resources. What we don't know is why someone would do it. Surely there is more to you than appearances show. Is there any way to get those memories back? Maybe, but it would also need an incredible amount of money. From what we see on your chip, you are very far from that possibility. Okay, so gotta, gotta earn the cash. Okay then, I want to know what my first assignment is. Before that, I'd like to propose something. If you have the time, I'd like to run some VR tests to see how much you remember of your old skills. VR? I like the little visual cue that you picked a good... A good, you know, a good choice. A nice choice. Virtual reality. We plug in and load up the construct world around you. It feels like you're awake, but you'd actually be lying right here, only aware of the virtual setting. I'd program several situations for your skills, and you bypass them in real time. Sure, let's do it. Is this like a tutorial? I guess maybe I could have skipped, actually. But I need, I need the tutorial. 
Okay. S. Yeah, there's like a little tutorial. That's that's a good idea. Uh, space to jump. Shift to run. Yes. Let's look at it. Is this gonna be like an enemy? Run! Is it gonna get me? It sounds like it's getting closer. Uh, shoot. Oh. Cool. Oh, cool, you can jump around. Okay, I don't know if that red thing's coming, so maybe I'm good. Spare the life of enemies changes. Of enemies changes your emotional state pos positively. Your idiot's level. <laughs> that was cool. supposed to take that many I feel like I okay do I get a new gun um, I feel like <laughs> maybe do headshots matter in this game okay this is cool oh did I do it oh wait did I get an energy drink oh I need to reload this is cool. Got him. Um, what's that? What do you call this type of like side scroller combat with the mouse or whatever? It, what was it called? Pedro something with the banana? Do you know that game? The one I'm talking about? This is like Deus Ex. That was a Deus Ex style punch takedown. How do you feel? That was intense. What do you think you'll do in real life? There's nothing comparing to what you'll do during your missions. I don't know, maybe you'll finally tell me? <laughs> you need to take this package to a friend of mine. You'll find it in a place called Care Point. It's a pharmacy about six blocks from here. Please be quiet about it. I don't want any attention brought to us. I'll just be. I understand. I'm gonna be professional. My friend Pedro. Thank you. That game's fun. And that's kind of like the same kind of combat I'm kind of feeling in this. So maybe that's... Affectus Dev. He could play my friend Pedro for some... For some uh, inspiration. Okay. I love the key. By the way, the keys coming up. It's just very professional. I. This is awesome. It's something I want to do better for my games is like make sure people don't get lost and confused. They know what the button prompts are. Okay. E. Um, I do not know that. This is interesting because it's like it's like a side you know it's kind of a side scroller game but oh shoot oh crap can he go through doors <laughs> do I have any guns by the way I did not I did not oh shoot he's just got his gun out that's okay okay oh. okay hide I did not know he'd be right out there when I went into the room. <laughs> Yes. Okay, I'm getting it. Oh, give me, give me his stuff. But I really don't. I don't want to kill anybody. I want to be try to be good. But yeah, this is like I'm trying to think of other games I've played that are like this. What's it called? Is there? There's like a horror game. I think Last Survivor or Lone Lone Survivor. It's like a. You you should check out the game Lone Survivor as well. Okay, can I go through here? Got an energy drink, cool. Oh shoot, I don't want to die. Or I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna see where I am at. Uh, oh, can I? He knows I'm there. Maybe if I just... I'm, probably, I'm not doing too hot. <laughs> okay, okay, he lost. Yes! I like the the indicators telling you where that where they're at. Oh, I need an energy drink. 
Yeah, the game Lone Survivor, I think, would be good research. Um, my friend Pedro. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh. That's okay. Yeah, the button prompts make it easy to play and understand, which is great. Um... Is this the pin? It says never forget. 18. Do you think that would be the pin? That's that's the only thing I can figure out. Um Okay, I'm going to go back to that. Help me remember that, guys. March 18th, 202037. And I think that's the only thing I can I can touch. Who are you and how did you get past the guard? Doesn't matter. Here's your package. <laughs> oh shoot, I didn't mean to skip it. Sorry. You can't imagine for how long I've waited for this. What is it? Yes, yes, very important for it. Did you say you work for Bones? I do. Well, I guess I can trust you then. This pen drive contains a program that Bones prepared for me. With it, I'll be able to enter the Effectus Corp distribution system and find out what they will when they will deliver more Effectus. Effectus Corp? The bastards who are in charge of manufacturing and distributing the drug. Bones made me a program which, with which I can get in the distribution schedule. That damn Bones is old, but he's still one of the best hackers in town. Really? Good luck with that. If you can pay me, I'll be on my way. Here's the payment for the order. Yes, 920... They call dollars in this game? Now go quickly before the guards come looking for you. Okay, should we try to do... I think we'll get more cash if I can pull this off. Wait, is it in here? Nope. This is fun. No, this, this is a good game. It's so polished. Okay. So, March 18th. And also, you guys are in Europe, so maybe the date would be the diff a different order. <laughs> Um, 2020, 37, March 18th. So would it be 8, 18, 0, 3, 37? Um, nope. I'll try this. 0, 3, 18, 37. What, what should I try, guys? <laughs> um, I, I'd like to get the pin. Probably get some extra money or something. That date on that calendar was... March 18th, and the year was 2237. 37. Okay. 30, 37. 03. 18. Nope. No, 18. Okay. 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 So 03. 22. 37. 22. 37. 03. Dang it! Six digit pen. It needs to be six digit. So twenty. It was twenty two thirty seven, right? That was at the year. Now I'm now I'm forgetting. Um, nano dollars. Yeah, thirty seven oh three eighteen. Almost. It's so close. I'm so close, but I might I might give up. 20, 37, 18. Yes! It was all Jade. Thanks, Jade. Disabled door security. Oh, okay, that opens up the other. Okay, I'm definitely. This is a great this is the best part about these games where you just you want to get as much money as possible. Is that? Can I go through there now? Oh wait, why does it say? Oh, that's the hide. Okay, I disabled some door security. So I Okay, which which door did it open though? Or wait, was the door locked? Do I, did I need to do that to make it? I thought it'd be like a bonus. Okay. Um, I thought it would like unlock these doors. Can I talk to him again? I won't shoot him. That would probably really be bad. It was the end door. Oh. Not like the door to, to see the client, right? 
So maybe I needed it to open this. Oh, to open that. Got it. Okay, cool. Was that the end of the demo? Or did I screw it up? It's another way to unlock the last door. I don't go through there. Um, is that it? Am I- did I beat it? Because I can't seem to go up. But this is cool. This has so much promise. I think you found a bug. <laughs> um, how long have I been playing this one? I've played this one about 30 minutes, so I probably need to turn it off anyway. But that was- that was cool. That's okay. I, I feel like I got a really good idea of what the game is. And I'm really impressed. That's fun. Uh, you can do you can do F12. Then close. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, there's the package. Let's do the package debrief. That's cool. But yeah, I, I do want to get to a robot's journey. That's our last game. Well, you're back. Did you have any problems? The guard did not let me pass. You seem to have a you, you seem to have a bad reputation. I managed to infiltrate through a roof access instead. No one noticed me. Impressive. How did you do that? I was very careful. Nobody got killed. Really, you keep surprising me. My turn to ask questions. She's got she's got gumption. I like that. I would have preferred if you told me the package was illegal. Nothing escapes you. I like these characters. I'll stop. Last time the corpo. When you say it like that, it makes sense. Is this, isn't this the better way? But I'm no use to you, Dad. This trust thing needs to work both ways. Well, if that's what you want. Although, before you can get bigger jobs, we're going to have to improve your body and your skills. You're going to have to talk to Dr. Case. Come back to me after you install your first implant. Ooh, I'm going to get upgrades. Cool. All right, this is a good place to stop. Um, that's awesome. I I think... Yeah, I didn't know how it, like this advent, an adventure game like this would work, like side-scrolling. But like going into different rooms, like the, you know, the Z-axis, the dimensionality of that. The dialogue choices are awesome. Getting the upgrades, getting the cash. Oh, I lost my money. I think because I did the low, the debug level thing. This is great. Um, this is by Effectus, everybody. It's really polished. I'm really impressed. Um, you guys should check out the Steam page. Uh, type in Effectus on Steam. Also, link in the description. Check out the link in the description below the video. That was really fun. I think if you did a prologue, uh, which is what so many Steam indie developers are doing now, and you l really link to the, you know, you link to the full game, tell them the wish list, the full game. Oh, and there's Steam. There's Steam Next Fest coming out. Are you guys, you guys aware of this? Um, these, if you can pull it off and get like prominent featuring, but you know, like by, you know, doing the same tactics, marketing your game, showing it to people, you can get really, uh, you can show, have a free game demo and then get wish list for the full game. And it's, it's a big, it's a big deal. This really can, can help a lot. So Valve Steam Game Festival is now the Steam Next Fest. Um, I think applications are due by April sometime so yeah that this would be really cool this can help you get so many wish lists get fans so yeah do do research on that and yeah I think we're ready to play a robot's journey um this game looks it's made with unreal it's made by a solo developer named Daniel and I'm really excited to try it out do we do we have Daniel in the chat by the way it's always nice to have the developer here answering questions. Um, but yeah, I love the gifts in the in the page. It kind of looks, you know, kind of like the exploration games that I like to play that I make. Kind of like puzzle puzzle games, a uh, little with a little bit of platforming. So yeah, I'm excited to try this. Oh yeah, a robot's journey, and he says I'm gonna join that festival. Awesome, definitely, because I love the 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 capsule art looks great. The screenshots, I love the variety of color. Um, yeah, this is great. It says, similar to Soma. <laughs> this looks a little happier than Soma. I think the only common thing is that there's robots involved. <laughs> okay, welcome, welcome to the chat. We're going to play a robot's journey. 
which I'm excited to try out. So how are we guys doing? How are we doing? We've been on for almost an hour and a half. Let's let's play a robot's journey. <clears throat> and this one should work too. Press any but oh wait, oh shoot. I think Daniel recommends a gamepad. I'm actually I'm gonna plug it in real quick. Got my classic USB Xbox 360 controller with ultra long cable. This thing is like an indie game staple. I took this to PAX. <laughs> Wait, why is it saying that? Did I put in the wrong one? So yeah, I got this. Make sure it's working okay. It's ready to go. Let's do this. A robot's journey. Behold, an Unreal Engine game is coming. I know. I Unity is more popular just by marketplace share. But in GDU, it's definitely predominantly Unity. But Unreal is amazing. I, helped, I used Unreal to help make Star Wars Secrets of the Empire at the Void. But I do. I am biased towards Unity. I, I, I want to get better at Unreal. I want to get really good with blueprints. I just don't have time. This is cool. <laughs> I love the, the logo. Logo looks great. Cute little baby robot. Music's nice. Love that screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks great. I always check options and stuff. Oh, cool. We got a little... Get 140 frames. Controls. Okay, cool. So move, move camera, so jump and, cl and jump and interact. That's simple. I like it. And then I like checking credits. I don't think a lot of people check credits, but I do. Game by Daniel, music by Brian Archer. Special thank you to David Whaley and the community and his online school, Game Dev Unlocked. We are very lucky to have you. Thanks for being, for being part of the community, Daniel. All right, let's do this. New game. Is this going to be a tearjerker? Menu's really nice, by the way. That's very professional. I'm so, I love making menus. <laughs> Graphics are amazing. Did you... Is this a... I don't know much about the Unreal engine marketplace is this a is this an asset you buy did you modify something I, i'd love to hear about that this looks great is that me i don't know who that little hologram was was that my baby i only know that because of the menu the menu taught me this is nice controls feel smooth I don't know what this light is following me. I just I do think of Navi from Zel Legend of Zelda. Cool. Oh, I can run. Wait, can I run? Oh, what is this? X. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm seeing the different rocks. Little color matching puzzle, I think. I'm just I'm just going into it. Okay, this is cool. And I guess it, it's it's hard to give feedback like about tutorials. You know, like instructing a player. I don't know. For GDU students, I, I uploaded an article in the appendix about game design. Definitely watch I definitely read that. Cause I don't know, it's it's kinda hard because you're gonna, you're gonna have a bunch of people of various skill levels, and they'll be like, I don't know, like, imagine if my mom was playing. My mom would be like, what do I do? What do I do? And like, for me, I know, it's like, oh, there's a colored rock and a colored portal. I know to put it there. I think it's fine. But I hope I don't, like, I hope I don't, like, confuse people. I like how that was on a rock, by the way. It teaches you you have to jump. That's, like, good instructional design. Um, I just bring that up because I know, like, to do stuff, but if you were to have a kid play, which, you know, like, a lot of kids played the first tree. 
And they would get stuck. And it's because, like, I kind of assumed adults would be playing. They would figure stuff out easier. So, I don't know. I just don't have the answer to that. Like, how simple you should make a game. Or how, like, instructional you should be. Okay. Oh, that was cool. Cool. I don't know why I did that as a player, but I'm excited. Okay. These are really good animations and models, by the way. Um, I don't know what this tank does, but I think I'm gonna- I'm, I'm assuming I'll need it later. And this thing's kind of glowing. This is interesting. Oh, I like how it's binary on like a rock. I don't think I've seen anything like that. One artifacts found. This is cool. I'm hearing like... I got the tank though. Oh, is this where the tank goes? No, I just picked it up. Oh. Am I looking for like, pieces? This is interesting. This is fun. I like this level design too. It's kind of enclosed. Um... Like, you don't get lost. You, like... It'd probably be, you know, it'd probably be a bad idea at the very beginning of the game to be like, you can go in any direction you want, which is exactly the mistake I made in the f Home is Where One Starts, my first game. Um, but you, it's good level design. And yeah, check out that, check out the appendix, guys, for the GDU students that are watching. I did a level design article, and it, it has to be gradual. Can I go through here? Um... Was I supposed to do that, Daniel? <laughs> Maybe it's a secret. But it's all about gradually easing in the player and gradually ramping up the difficulty, carefully adjusting the challenges involved. And maybe the... Can I get up there? Or maybe do I need like a... Oh! Oh, you can... Oh, got it. Okay, I didn't know to hold on. Maybe I go over here. Sorry if I'm not supposed to be over here. <laughs> cool. Maybe having like... At the beginning of a game, having like little hints about like the button prompts be like... Just a reminder. That can be a great instructional tool, because it tells you the controls and says... You know, like, hold X... Hold X to... to climb, or something. Or maybe I'm not even supposed to be right here, I'm not sure. Can I get up there? Oh wait, oh can I go up this way? Okay, cool. I'm doing it. And I do have this little tank, which... Oh, is this gonna be another one of my parts? Yeah, that's in the polish phase. Unreal developers can use Quixel for free, which I think is so good for indie devs. Yeah, James says, such a beautiful, chilled environment, the music's gorgeous. I really like it, it's, it's relaxing. Um, X. I'm pressing X, but maybe I'm not supposed to be here right now. But I'm proud of myself for getting up here. I did get something. Okay, let's do this. Oh, I, know, I see the parts actually in the upper right corner. I'm gonna assume I'm not supposed to go that way. Maybe there's an invisible wall. Um, okay, what's over here now? Can I... Can I go into the water? I'm not totally sure. X. Ah, got it. Okay. I don't know what this is now. Oh, my battery's better. Is that my life? And now it's not saying X. So maybe I'm like a little confused about that. And I know like these games are always early. Um, so, so no pressure. I just try to give you guys my stream of consciousness thoughts. Cause that's honestly like the best thing I could do for you as a play tester is just be like, what am I supposed to do now? 
Um, and that's why I brought up that thing like earlier about like I I'm pretty good at games because I've been playing games 30 years of my life. I played a lot of indie games. Oh, do I go back to this thing? Does it have to do with the light I had? Nope. Okay, it's not. So now I'm g I guess I'm a little lost because now that button prompt doesn't show up when I went to that triangular piece of equipment. So now I'm thinking I go back to where I was. Ooh, yeah. You have to drop off the canister first. Okay, cool. Um, this game is very colorful. I love it. Your game is looking good. And I think I did that. And I got that light thing. And I don't have to do that part. So I'm guessing I go up here next. And I think... I think most people would... I, I saw that little path, and I was like, ooh, it's a secret. But now hopefully you can see like how someone could get distracted. <laughs> like myself. So, okay, I'm gonna try this again. Can I go up here? Yeah. I'm doing it. This is really nice, appealing atmosphere. Maybe add more con contrast, making stones and metals, warmer color palette. Actually, I think the... For right now, I think this color palette is great. Um, there is like a splash of color right there. I, I don't mind... Monochromatic color doesn't have to be a bad thing. Um, and especially if there's different levels in a robot's journey and maybe you change up the color palette then. That's kind of what I do in like the first tree. The first level... Oh, here's that! Okay. Got it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess my only piece of feedback would be I, I got I got kind of lost, or I got kind of confused because I went here out of order. And I'm trying to think of a way to instruct the player. I probably would have never gone over here. This makes so much sense now. I wouldn't have gone over here if I didn't see that crack right there. See that little path? So maybe, I think that, that I would patch up that, that, that little path. And then I wouldn't have gotten distracted. <laughs> Which in an exploration game, people do. They want to explore. They want to say, oh, what's that? Oh, I see a secret. Is that like, do I have to go over there next? But now, now I get it. X, now I get it. Cool. Okay, on to the next section. And now my battery's at 75%. Oh, a little cinematic, maybe. Man, Unreal Engine looks so good. Love, like, the foliage. Oh, there we go, my baby robot. So do these bring back memories? Or like holograms? Like memories in my data bank? I don't know. That was interesting. Because I was about to say, probably like another piece of criticism or advice I was thinking of is like, the game opened up and I just woke up. And I didn't know what the goal was. And maybe it was like I had amnesia, like robot memory loss. There's a lot of robots in this Feedback Friday, which is, which is great. But now I'm, I'm already starting to get like, I didn't know what the story or my goal was, other than the title screen, which is why I was holding my robot baby. But then I started the game and I just was like, what's going on? Like, I'm just walking around. But now it's seeming like I'm looking... It looks like I'm, I'm like, looking for somebody. My robot baby, I suppose? That was pretty cool. Oh, okay, I get it. That sucked out, that sucked out my energy, my battery power. And then, in pure, and typical exploration game fashion, I really want to go over here. See if there's a secret, maybe like more battery power or something. Be cool if there's like a little Easter egg to reward the people that the reward the people that go out of their way. Okay, I just gotta know what happens. Can I go in the water? No. That happens in Dear Esther, and that's what blew my mind. When I played Dear Esther for the f That game changed my life. Because I played it in 2010. Never seen a game like it. And, like, you would go out of your way to, like, follow the beach for no reason, and you would find, like, I don't know, you would find weird hints that kind of piece together the story through the environment. In Dear Esther, you'd go follow the beach that you're not supposed to go, 
and it would reward you with like hundreds of ultrasound photographs of a baby in the womb and it's all scattered around the beach and you're like what is this and it gave context to what the story was about and it rewarded you for going out of your way and that's that's all games are is just their gameplay loops of work and reward oh there it goes on the next stage um, this is a very accessible game. The graphics are nice, the music's nice. Oh. Oh, that was cool. Awesome effect. Oh, nice. Alright. Canisters. Oh, that uses... Interesting. Okay, cool. I did it. I wonder if it'd be a good idea, too, to have... To have, like, it tell you how much battery power it costs. Like, have, like, a little, in, like, a little floating number or something that says, This costs 30% battery. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, 30% battery. Wait, oh, am I supposed to go this way now? I lifted that up. No. Okay. Maybe I need more... Is it all the way completed? Um, okay, I'll just keep going. But it's fun. And, you know, just... I'm, I'm saying, you know, I'm giving advice and stuff. It doesn't have to be... Sometimes you want... I don't know. What's the word? What's the, what am I trying to say? You don't have to follow the rules every time. And if you want to go for a specific feeling, then you can do that. Um, it You know, it can be kind of... Sometimes it can it can be a risk and it'll take a little bit more work to like do it differently Like if you don't want to explain everything and that's kind of what when I made home is where one starts I Didn't want to give someone a path because I wanted them to get lost Oh, this is cool. I Love these buildings I like the materials and the, the reflections Okay, a little puzzle. This is cool Um that. I probably can't get up there, but I have this cube. Oh! I know this. Yes. Um, and people even said that, like, in the first tree... Oh, where did I get those? I wanted people to feel a little lost. And it was because, like, I put myself into the game where it's like, I felt lost dealing with the loss of a loved one. And I wanted people to get lost in the woods. Oh, cool. Okay, got that. Nice. I don't know what those are doing. I don't know if it's giving me new abilities, or I'm just finding, like, parts of my body that I've been missing. Oh, what's going on here? So all I'm saying is, you don't have to follow the book completely. And it's cool to take risks. And it might be a little bit more work because you have to do more play testing to make sure people are like, a oh, memory of my robot baby. That was that was a nice little vignette. And there's been no dialogue. And I, I love I love silent games. I'm still not quite sure what this yellow ball is that's following me around, but it's cool. Like, I definitely understand how hard it can be to, like, program something like that. So that's looking awesome. Oh, one of these binary rock things. I wonder what it says in binary. I like the visual cue. Tells you, hey, this is something you should check out. Oh, I'll, I'll do this first. Reese says, this game looks awesome. Great job, whoever made this. <clears throat> it's the tiny light, the robot baby. Oh. So you guys are smarter than me. I just... <laughs> um, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. It's like the, ro like the spirit or like the data bank or like the robot baby or something. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of low on... Okay, and now, like, this has been good level design because it started off in an enclosed area to teach you, like, kind of show you the ropes, and then 
it gradually opens up. And now look how much more room there is. There's more choices. Um, and it's not just trees. Like, if there was trees in all directions, I might get a little lost. But I see something on the hill, and I'm like, oh, I want to I wanna check that out. What's that thing over there? And it's because it was just in my line of sight, you know? And then one of the... Something gamers love, and, and I like it too, is like making a mental map of an area that they're exploring. So they're like, where... Where is this? And then they're like, okay, I'm right here. That was where that cube puzzle was. And I think back there is where the lake is. And that's that's what makes games interesting to people. Um, do I need battery? More battery? Oh, I need a canister. Okay, so canister thing right here. What happens if I hit start? Cool. Um, oh, okay, and that's right. I got the canister. I got the canister by doing the, the rock puzzle, I think, right? Come on. Oh, I might have glitched it. Okay, there it is. I stopped. I couldn't jump. Now I can't jump again. Try this again. I'm doing it. Can I just drop? Alright, we're doing this again. And, and now we've... Part of good game design is like, okay, can we... Can we, like, uh, increase the difficulty a little bit? And so we have, like, now it's much harder to get these stones. It was harder to get the yellow one, at least. The red one was there to kind of give you a hint. Hey, um, we're doing this again. So do that. I think a kid could figure it out. I was talking about, like, earlier about... It, it's hard to give feedback, because I'm so I'm so experienced with playing games like this. And I just... it's It'd be curious to have... Oh, there's, like, a memory. I'd be curious to have, like, a kid play it and see what they do. Just depends what their skill level is. This is beautiful. Everyone in the chat saying it's beautiful, and I agree. That was nice. And I'm assuming I'm gonna need more battery power to unlock more of those jumping puzzles. I like a little memory there, that's nice. Is there a secret up here? I don't... Th oh, is there? I'm just gonna keep looking. <laughs> nope. Oh, I can hear the water. Okay, and I got those. Okay, we're looking for... Looking for the blue one, I think. Oh, mushrooms. Would it be around here, possibly? I imagine it's not too far. Oh, nice. Get a little reward for going off the beaten trail. I don't see the blue rock, so maybe it's back closer. I don't... I imagine it wouldn't be too far. And this is where, like, it's your job as a game designer to be like... You could put the rock, like, a mile away. But then they'd have to slowly walk and take it over. Um... So, yeah, it's just... Oh. How much power? Oh wait, what does that do? Oh, does that does that reveal? Um. Oh, nice, sweet, cool. I got a little dopamine rush of feeling like, oh, I did it. I figured it out. <laughs> but it wasn't like I was a genius or anything. I just I just saw some a button and I pushed it. But I, I feel like I feel like. I earned it, and I think it's because I was looking in the wrong direction. It doesn't take a lot to make a game engaging like that. So now I got the canister. Cool. Animations are nice. And this is where it's like... This is like my favorite parts of exploration game, and this is like why people love games like Metroidvanias, like Hollow Knight, and Ori and the Blind Forest and stuff. They feel like they're exploring like this huge new world. 
And so, like, I got the canister, and then my brain immediately goes, okay, where was that canister place? And that that's fun to me. I'm like, where where was it? I think it was right here, and you're kind of challenging yourself. So, yes, it was close by. I thought it was, I thought it was like, I thought it'd be harder to find. Nice. 90% battery. I wonder if I could get to 100. Saw some stuff over here. This is cool. I'm not totally sure. I saw some collectibles over here. Did I not? I'm not totally sure why I'm collecting the pieces. Because I feel like my body is pretty complete already. Maybe that's a feature that's coming later. But that was just something that crossed my mind where I'm like, why am I collecting those pieces? And I have the little hologram that pops up. Um, did I see this one already? No, I did not. I probably, I'm probably gonna call it quits soon. But this has been awesome. I've really enjoyed three artifacts found. Is this like a, I'm, I'm wondering if this is like a, I'm wondering if this is like a side quest of some kind. But, I'm glad I found it. Yeah, I play, game, I play games like this, and it makes me think about all the things I could have done better for my game, the first tree. But luckily, in my experience, if the story is... You know, like, if you can really, like, put your heart into it, and you make a somewhat unique experience, that people haven't played before, people can be pretty forgiving. Oh, this is one of those trees. But yeah, I've learned so much about better gameplay design. And how to like make the game more user-friendly, more engaging. And I hope to put all those things I've learned into my next game. And maybe that game... Whoa. I was sliding. Maybe my next game just... It won't... I don't know, maybe it won't do well. But then I'll like, I'll take what I learned from that and put it into the game after that. Um. Oh, cool, so I have to do it. Oh, I'm raising the whole thing. That's a cool idea. Um, I think I need to do it one more time, I suppose. Do I have enough battery power to do it? What do I need for this? I probably need one of those buttons. Or wait, no, this won't open until I raise the last one? Oh wait, yeah, I see the three. One, two, three. So do I have enough battery power for the last one? And then I'll probably call it quits so I can talk in the chat for a little bit. This is fun. I really... I'm a sucker for games like this. Oh, is this a secret? Ooh, maybe Daniel could put a secret in here. I'm probably... It's probably why you did that anyway. But yeah, it's just the early part of the game. But it's really solid for what you have here. Is this the one I do? Oh yeah, I don't think I've filled this one up yet. Do I have enough battery power? I'm not sure how much you need, but... I think I'm doing it. Right. This is cool. Okay, I'll get to that platform thing and then we can chat. Yeah, you guys should wishlist this. I'm checking out the chat. I don't even know if it needs a... You know, you guys are talking about a hint system. I haven't felt lost in any of the games, really. Um... Yeah, like, you guys have done a good job not getting lost. Even in Wild Dose, which, you know, has some, like, big open areas, there was clear objectives, and I kind of knew what to do next, always. This is cool. Is my, the stream doing okay? Oh, the music's changed. Oh, we got some puzzles. This is a cool game. This could be a game... Oh, wait, did I do it? I don't... I think I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> oh. Oh, you have to turn that on first. Got it. 
I can see this game. Oh wait, isn't this? This is an elevator. Whoops. Uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Oh, that's what it is. Got it. Um, this would be a game. Okay, this is gonna be hard. How do I do this? This is gonna be a game I can see on the Switch. Sorry, that's all I was gonna say. <laughs> Um, Unreal Engine, it does port to Switch. I think there'd have to be a lot of visual compromises. Probably with the shader complexity and like the view distance. Volumetric light probably would not work on Switch. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll call it quits here, but you guys should wishlist this game. There, there's not a demo yet. It sounds like Daniel's gonna try to get something for Steam Next Fest. But this has been really fun. Yeah, this is totally something like my type of game. This is a robot's journey. Ralph, this game is really like a 30 plus year old trying to play what three to five year old kid and runs out of energy all the time. <laughs> um, that was fun. I don't feel like I got lost. Um, and there was like, if I did get lost, if I did get lost, I was able to like figure it out pretty fast, I guess. I was able to be like, okay, maybe I need to do that first. That was great. Thanks for these three fun games. Um, yeah, what did you guys want to talk about for a little bit? Let me get the chat out. And then I'm going to eat lunch. I think my family took off. To, uh, my little girl has a preschool trip field trip um so they just left for that nice and quiet in here yeah thank you for letting me play it both you guys all three of you guys we got a robot's journey effectus and wild dose here that was fun um andrew is that how you say it and Andrew Zedge. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Random silly question. Could a super driven, stubborn solo developer create a game like Mar Morrowind? I try not to say the word scope creep. I don't know. I'm trying to think the best like information I can give you is like, what are the, some of the biggest games that have been made by solo developers? And we have a few examples. Stardew Valley was made by Eric Baroni, solo developer. Um, uh, Lucas Pope, who made Return of the Obra Dinn, solo developer, and his game is pretty big, and he does everything. He does music as well, writing, and so those are like, that's like the only like data I can give you is like, well, what are some of the other big solo developed games that have come out already that were actually completed? And you have to remember, these are probably the best game developers in, in the industry, the best indie developers in the world. And Return of the Obra Dinn, which I love that game, but you know it wasn't huge. It was detailed and stuff, but it was it wasn't a Mor Morrowind, if you know what I mean. I think a Morrowind game would be impossible, <laughs> to be frank. Um, you could do like a chunk of it or just a small piece of it, not like obviously like an Elder Scrolls type of world. But what if it was, I don't know, even like a robot's journey, like. That felt big to me. It was expansive. And yeah, like there wouldn't be like fast travel or anything to those different spots, but I don't know, can you take a chunk of that idea, that 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 just the feeling of exploration and put that into a different kind of game. So yeah, that's that's just the the one thing I thought of. Gabriel says a solo dev remade Daggerfall in Unity. At least I think it was a solo dev. That's interesting. And but and also another thing is remaking a game is so much easier than making everything from scratch I don't, I don't know a game called bright memory i'll have to check that out i've never heard of that one andrew is fine <laughs> sorry andrew what's for lunch i don't know i might make black beans and rice out of a box <laughs> um yeah all three of these games were great grim raven says david are you currently making a new game i want to i'm not currently and i and i need to i've been really busy with the school, which I just finished all the content for version 1.0. I may add stuff here and there. And then I've been working on other projects with other companies that I can't talk about. So it's just, 
it's stuff I'm excited about. I'll, I'll be able to tell you guys in a little bit, hopefully. But yeah, I've just been really busy. It's a lot on my plate. But I miss making games. I do. I. It's like it's who I am. Like I think about what I want to do with the rest of my life, and I want to tell stories through games. That's what I want to do. YouTube's cool and all, but it's not like who I am, like inside, like what I really want to do the rest of my life. But I do like videos, and I do like doing the streams when I can. So yeah, I'm learning a lot about, you know, when you're like a full-time indie, indie, you know, you're self-employed and you run your own business. You have to ask the hard questions, like what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Like what, what do you want to focus your business on? And yeah, I've learned, I'm still learning through all that. Um, are you currently making a new game? Have you finished remastering where Home is Where One Starts? Home is Where One Starts and a possible console port. But again, that's something on my list, my huge list of stuff where I was working on it. I, the remaster is pretty much done. The remaster is available on Steam for the, my $3 game, my first game, Home is Where One Starts. But I did want to port it to consoles, and I just haven't had time. Uh, I might get to it. Honestly, I'd rather make a new game. You know what I mean? Um, and Home is Where One Starts, I don't know. I'm not, like, super... I know I can do better. <laughs> And I want to like continue to stretch myself and tell new stories. And like for the first tree, for instance, believe it or not, I'm still working on stuff on it that I can't talk about. And I'm so tired of working on it. I really am. I'm, I want to do something new. So yeah, the first tree, I'm grateful for it. But I think I've worked on it for five years now, four or five years, even though I only it only took 18 months to get the first version out. But it's hard because people like the game and it brings income for my family. So yeah, it's just like I'm asking, you know, these are the kind of things I got to figure out. Um, all right, what else we got here? Did I just miss the whole stream? It'll be you can play it back. I'll have DVR enabled. <laughs> um, have you announced the beginning of translation? Uh, translation for the course or for I, I'm a little confused. I don't think I'll have multiple subtitles just because that would be, it'd just be too expensive. I have English subtitles though on every video, including the advanced module. And I don't want to, I don't even want to tell you guys how much money I spent on the advanced module subtitles. It was a lot of money, but I, that was important to me that people who have, who have an easier time reading, they get full value out of the videos. So there will be subtitles on every video in English only. Um, how much did you market your first game, Home is Where One Starts? That's something I learned is I didn't market it at all, and it flopped. And that was in 2015. That was six years ago. And that was when games were so much easier to... Ha that was when it was easy, and it was still really hard back then in 2015. And I didn't market it because I was a no-name. I didn't have an audience. I didn't have. I didn't care about wishlist. I didn't even think about wishlist. And so sure enough... Man, and I did have all these like journalists who promised to write an article on launch day for Homeless Born Starts, and none of them did. I had like only one or two really small websites write about the game. And yeah, that's why it's, and now it's even, it's exponentially harder now, which I'm not trying to be a downer, but it means you have to put more work into getting the wish list numbers high. And that's what I tried to fix with um, the first tree. Like, I really focus on marketing it every week for like a year straight. And it was slow going at first, but then some gifts resonated with people. And because of that, they resonated with people, which meant that was confirmation that people actually were interested. If I kept posting gifts for like six months and no one liked them, no one shared them, and I tried to do everything right, that would have been a good sign that the game wasn't that interesting, the visuals weren't that appealing, the story wasn't that appealing. Like That would be data, you know what I mean? But the first tree, it resonated with people. Um, it was shared a lot, sometimes n none at all, but m most times people would share the gifts. And that, to me, that was, that was information, that was data telling me, hey, you, should, you, need, to f you need to finish the game because people want to play it, if that makes sense. Um, Camille says, sorry for small off top here, off topic here. Marketing question. Should I start marketing my game before having a Steam page for it? Um, no, I would do the Steam page first. 
um, at the very, if you don't have a Steam page, you should at least have an email. I mean, sorry, a website with an email list. Like, sign up for MailChimp and start like gathering emails, like for updates. Create a newsletter, an email list. But yeah, like it would stink. Like, imagine this: like you get for some reason you get super lucky, and sometimes it is just luck. Imagine you post a a, a tweet with a gif of your game, and it gets five thousand likes. It gets a hundred thousand impressions. And people are like, wow, this game, this is a cool game. And they're like, where's the Steam page? Oh, there's no Steam page. Oh, oh well. Maybe I'll check it out later. And then they never do. Because people on the internet, in general, they have ADHD and they forget immediately. And if there's not a link, something to act on right in that moment, then they won't do it. They just won't. You need a link. You need a hyperlink, a call to action to say... People find that ran, you know, they see a viral tweet and they're like, "Wow, that looks cool." Oh, okay, here's the Steam page. Okay, I'll do it right now, and then they wish list it right then. So yeah, it's all about gathering. I guess you could call them leads. They're warm leads of people who might buy your game, and they wish list it. And you got to remember too, only like 15 to 20 percent of those wish lists will actually buy your game on launch day. So yeah, it it is. It's a numbers game, and so. If you have 10,000 wish lists, maybe about 15 to 20% of those people will buy it on the first day or the first two days. So like 1,500 to 2,000 purchases. And that might barely be enough to get on the new, the top, like the new and trending tab on Steam, which would be like a snowball rolling down a hill where then people are like, oh, what's this game? I never heard of this. Oh, it's on the new and trending tab. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. And then it could, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's a cascading, it's this effect of, of um, yeah, like, just domino, a domino effect. That's all I'm trying to say. So, yeah. Um, Andrew says, you had mentioned Marketing Mondays might not be viable. Could you be open to doing one-on-ones like Chris, Chris Z does? I'm assuming the cost would be substantial in that case. I'm thinking, I, I don't know, I'm still thinking about it. I, I think I'll, I'll do, like, kind of one-on-ones in, as a group. Because I want everyone to learn from it. I want I like I want questions to be shared in the group and not sent to DMs to me because I want everyone to learn. So for the members only Q and A, maybe I go over your stuff in front in front of everybody. That's kind of an idea I'm playing with, but I'm still figuring it out. Um, yeah, these are these are good questions. Um, I'll probably get off in a little bit. Um, thanks for the comments, guys. I'm reading them. They're really nice. Solo Cog says, what are your thoughts on learning game dev? Starting with mobile, games you don't really care about to try to make a living off of, less less complete games, and then switching to games that you would want to make. That's something I talk about in the course, too, is the trick is finding a game idea that you want to make, that you can make, and a game that and a game idea that will sell. It's like three circles, and what's the middle of that Venn diagram? And, um, and so I think, you know, like... Something I don't talk about as much as I think I should is that I made a lot of unfinished projects before making Home is Where One Starts, and they were just me messing around. They were experiments, and I never intended to release any of them, and it wasn't until I did enough experiments of games that I like. I know I could make that. So you could make a mobile game and just finish them. It is important to finish them, but what I did is with Home is Where One Starts, I told myself I will finish this game. But the experiments I did, I wasn't like, I'm going to finish every single bad experiment I did and release that on Itch or it's Steam. And I'm glad I didn't do that. But there's a difference between like prototyping and learning and experimenting and then actually committing to a project that you know you can finish. A mobile game, though, is a great way to do that if you want to learn how to finish a game. But you got to be excited about the idea. And Home is Where One Starts, I was excited to make that. I wasn't so excited about my prototypes that I messed around with, but I was excited to finish Home is Where One Starts. And so if you have an idea, if you can't think of an idea that you'd be excited to make, um, then keep experimenting. Try not to fall into the trap of, oh, I'm going to make I'm gonna make the next Fallout game. I'm going to make the next GTA. Like, don't do that. Keep experimenting. Keep playing small games so you can figure out what kind of small game you can make and finish, if that makes sense. Wild Doe says, but Home Home did pretty well on Steam. At the beginning, it did not. Um, and it's done well because it's six years old, and I've sold the game for 50 cents on multiple occasions. 
And it still, it only has, what, 300, 400 reviews on Steam. And so, I don't know, you do the math. Most of those were sold in bundles or for 50 cents. And so it it made, like, nice bonus money that I could build a computer with. Like, I built a computer with the money I made from Home is Where One Starts because I was working full-time at the same time. So it was bonus money. And I, that's why I was, like, I was so excited when the game, even though it didn't do great, and maybe I was expecting, like, oh, I thought it'd do a little better. I was like a little bummed, but at the same time, I was also really proud of myself because it made enough money so I could buy, what did I buy? I spent like $2,000 on my on a dream desktop computer, and I didn't feel guilty about it because I it was bonus money, you know. But it was not enough money to quit my job, pay the mortgage, support my children. Just bonus money, which is okay because I was able to take what I learned and make the first tree. Um, okay, Effecta says, how many wish lists do you think our games need before a Kickstarter and a launch day? Kickstarter, you know, something I'm not super, super familiar with. I haven't done a Kickstarter. I do know the risk is real that with a Kickstarter, your number one fans will buy a key. Like, they'll donate to your Kickstarter. And then they won't, um, they won't buy the game on day one, which will screw up your Steam launch because they're going to get a Steam key for free, which does not affect the algorithm. The algorithm algorithm is not affected by key redemptions, only by purchases. So that's something to keep in mind. And that's, you know, it's not the end of the world if that happens. It just means you'll have to market a little bit more to make, uh, to have enough wish lists of people who did not support your Kickstarter, if that makes sense. Um, how many did I have for the first tree? And that was in 2017, end of 2017. It was kind of a different world back then. And it gets, it gets harder and harder each month. I had, I'm trying to think, because I had about eight or 9,000, and then I hit the popular upcoming tab, and then you get so many wish lists by being on the popular upcoming tab. And that gave me right there, that gave me like 4,000 in a few days. That gave me 4,000 wish lists. Um, in a few days, and how many wish lists? I when I launched, I had twelve thousand wish lists. That was including the popular upcoming tab, though. Like that was like on that like the hour I launched, I had twelve thousand wish lists, and that was enough to make a splash. Thankfully. All right. Clean game reviews. How do you even get a Steam page? Oh, well, my online course talks all about it. I walk you through the whole thing. Um, you need $100, the Steam page. Um, and you have to fill out some tax information. You need to be over 18 um, to be you know, a legal adult. You need uh, bank information, so you need to have direct deposit information. And yeah, it's pretty... You just go to Steamworks. Just type in Steamworks Partner into Google. Steamworks Partner. And that will that's the page you want to become a Steamworks partner and to make a steam page um yeah you're welcome um i hope i hope these answers help a little bit ralph says was it hard to port the, to iphone the first tree um um it, it it wasn't as hard as i thought and that's only because i had the help of do games the porting studio who helped get my game on switch and xbox and playstation and we together we worked on it for like seven months um, with his help, with their help, I was able to get the optimizations good enough for Switch. And believe it or not, like a Switch port, I don't know. Like if a game could run smoothly on Switch, it will probably run smoothly on a, on an iPhone, on a modern phone. Android was kind of a pain, but iPhone was really pleasant. I really liked iPhone and it's powerful phones. The GPUs and the CPUs are insane. Yeah, it wasn't as hard as I thought. I used Rewired for the touch controls, which was easy. Yeah, it was actually really fun. Um, Android, not so much. iOS was worth it. And it sold great on iOS. And it got featured on the App Store. But it was hard, and I couldn't have done it without those really serious optimizations we made for the Switch version, if that makes sense. Um, what else? I'll steal your quote. People on the internet have ADHD. HD, so true. People, like, they get distracted. Like, they just, if there's not a link right there, even if it's a game they really like, they're like, wow, that looks cool. They forget. They just forget. There's too much content. It's a fire hose of information every day on Twitter, on Reddit, on all those places. So, yeah, you, you should have a Steam page before you market, for sure. Um, what else? Um, 
uh, near Snape says, Hey David, are you doing any more feedback Fridays? I was making something for the jam and it was my first game. It didn't scope it well. So I wanted to serve as a teaser for a full game. Um, let me get back to you on that. Cause I was playing around with doing different streams and like I was talking about marketing Monday, which I might not do, but I do want to, you know, I do what I will do. I will continue to do um, Q and A's, which will be like an, an all an all like an umbrella stream for all the stuff for GDU students only. That's what I'm thinking. I'm still figuring stuff out. Um, but we're out of early access pretty much. I'm going to make a big announcement soon because we're. Uh, I'm going to discontinue the early access um, role on Discord. You guys will keep it because you're my early access supporters. But future students, it, it won't be available anymore. So we're done. We're done with, with all that. Matt Tina. Is that Christina? <laughs> I'm looking at the little thumbnail. Is that my sister-in-law? Hi, Matt Tina. Um, what, what else? I, I'm hungry. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off soon. Death curse. So much to balance. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of bit off more than I could chew, to be honest. I'm learning how to do it all because I am still like a solo developer. We do have a community manager now. We have Arcania or Mel, and she's doing awesome. She's helping me so much. There's a lot to do. It's a lot to run an online course. It's a lot to support these games. It's a lot to do a YouTube channel. It's a lot. That's why I like these big YouTubers. You still like, I don't know, you think like Markiplier, or those guys like are doing it by themselves, but they're not. They have teams of people because it's just so much to do. But yeah, it's just the age of the internet. Um, hope that makes sense. Uh, will you be adding modules regarding iOS and Android? I would. I, I have. I have been thinking about that. I might even like do like a YouTube, a public YouTube video, and then promote the course. I don't know, but I do want to make a little video about that. I want to get the beginner module game, and then show you how to make it touchscreen workable using um, PlayMaker, the beginner. Yeah, the Let's Dev beginner game, and then show you how to put it on a on a mobile device. I think that'd be cool. Show you how to publish it too, and talk about the things I learned about a successful launch. But also, my Android launch was a bust, so maybe you guys shouldn't listen to me that much. iOS, iOS went well. Um. Anyway, yeah. So this is great. Thanks, guys, for watching. Yep, we got Melanie here in the chat, our moderator, community manager. Matt Tina says, "You're awesome, Matt." That's my brother. <laughs> uh, we play games all the time together. We love games. Matt wants to know when is the Warzone charity stream? <laughs> Do you guys want to hear something funny? I love artsy games. I love story driven games. But one of my favorite games of all time is Warzone. And I play with my brothers. And I'm I'm seriously like I'm like such a stereotypical cliche gamer as I get a I get a can of Mountain Dew, I get Doritos, literally. And I just play Warzone and I love it. I love that game. So I was even thinking like maybe like do a charity stream for my birthday and just play it and chat, hang out with you guys. <laughs> um, Warzone charity stream. I love I love Modern Warfare Warzone. I love Battle Royale games. They're like my favorite. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to get off soon. That's been fun though. And I don't say that because I'm the community manager. <laughs> the community is the best. We do have an excellent community. Everyone's so nice. That was something I thought that the community would kind of just be like this add-on. But from what the reviews and from what people have said about Game Dev Unlocked, the community, the Discord server, and the friendships people have made, they say that's their favorite thing. That's like their favorite part. And that's kind of... I didn't, I didn't expect that. And I'm glad. It makes me happy. People love, love the community and the people here. So yeah, it's great. A lot of really nice, friendly people. We try to I try to make GDU, you know, feed pos, you know, feedback to make your game better is is welcome, but it's also supposed to be like a haven from the rest of the internet where everyone's so mean and so judgmental. <laughs> um, GDU is supposed to be a safe place to share your work and you know, to still improve your skills but at least get like a little bit of encouragement along the way. That was kind of my goal with it all. <sighs> Matt Tina, my family Family says, Arcania is doing a great job. I agree. Uh, all right. Okay, cool. 
Um, Sant- okay, last question. Santiago. Hello, could I? Could you give us an example of how to make a successful Kickstarter, Captain? I've never... Everyone thinks I do Kickstarters. I don't. But um, here, I'll, I'll leave you guys with one thing. I want to help you guys out. The best article ever was shared. Yeah, I think it's this one. This is one of my friends, Philomena Schwab. Um... She's awesome. I met her at the museum. Uh, she's from Switzerland. And I met her in Washington, D.C. at the American Art Museum when I showed my game and she showed her game. And she speaks at GDC and she is so smart. She knows so much about games. Um, she did the best Kickstarter post ever just a few days ago about their game, The Wandering Village. And you guys, I'm going to post it in the chat. Definitely read this article. Um, yeah, she knows how to do kick. They've, they've done so many Kickstarters and they always kill it. And she's really, t- and you know, it's not just her. She works with a good team, a team of talented uh, developers in Switzerland. But yeah, they're awesome. Definitely check out Philomena's uh, blog post about the Wandering Village if you want to learn about Kickstarters. I've never done a Kickstarter, but I know my friend, yeah, Philomena is good at them. Thomas Brush is good at them. And who else? Yeah, there's there's other resources out there, but I hope that helps. All right, peace. I'm getting off. I'm going to take a break. I've been working really hard finishing the course, and I'm burnt out. Um, Yeah, I'll be on. Guys, check out the new content in the course for those who are members. And if you're not members, um, use this coupon code for 30% off. We'd love to have you. Best community ever. Amazing game developers. Everyone's so talented and nice. And we'd love to have you join. Um, It's a great place. I've done. I've literally... I've put so much of myself and so much work for two and a half years into like the best learning resource possible. And I think, not trying to brag, but I think I succeeded. It's a great online course to help you on your game dev journey and to just to make games fast without knowledge of code or even art, really. So yeah, and it is Unity focused. It is like, so the tutorials are Unity based, but the core lessons are uh, platform agnostic. And we have people who use Game Maker. We have a few people that use Unreal, but it is I you know I'm not gonna lie. It is like Unity driven, but the core lessons you don't have to use Unity if that makes sense. So anyway, this has been fun. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, this is great. We have great people, and thanks for your contributions. Thanks for the games. Uh, check out yeah we have the Kickstarter that ends in five days for Wild Dose. Check out the links below. And I think, I think that's it. Oh, where's the link to the course? Yeah, let, actually, let me put that. Because we love, I would love to have more people join us. Um, where is it? Sales page. Here's a link to the course, if you guys can see that. And I think that's it. Is there, is there anything else I'm missing? Thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah. Uh, I will see you guys later. Good luck. Finish those games. And... Um, Thanks for watching. See ya.